Welcome back, everyone. In this short episode, I want to talk about flexibility in education and learning. Our educational system is rigid because it's designed to enforce conformity. And most of us have experienced how bad of a fit that is for neurodivergent kids and other kids who struggle in school. They need to learn differently and to demonstrate what they've learned differently. They need flexibility in their education. But how do you create that flexibility in such an inflexible environment? The need for flexibility is a topic that comes up again and again in the workshops and the upcoming Free School Struggle Summit. Kids who learn differently need us to think about their education differently. The law in the United States requires it, but it's rarely fully implemented for our students. You'll learn a lot about how parents and educators can be flexible for students with learning challenges and why it's so crucial during this summit. I'm going to provide you with three ways to implement flexibility from our experts right here, right now. First is flexibility of the environment. Who says that the only way to learn and do schoolwork is sitting in a chair with your feet on the floor, scooted up under the desk, with your materials on top of the desk? Some kids need to move. Some kids need to stretch out. Some kids need a softer seat to focus on something other than how hard that seat is. One can learn and complete schoolwork just about anywhere as long as it works for them. If your kid or student wants to lay on the floor under their desk and they're on task there, then let them lay on the floor in front of their desk or under their desk. Maybe more kids will want to do it. That could happen. But again, what is that harming? As long as kids are on task, under their desk, they're learning, then it's totally okay. We give you permission to fly in the face of normal, traditional classroom or homework structure. We need to offer more flexibility. Let kids listen to music or YouTube if it works for them while they're doing schoolwork. It took me a really long time to realize that listening to music helps every one of my family members focus, even though it eliminates every shred of possible focus for me. It does not work for me, but it is pivotal for every member of my family. We're all different. So let your kid try things they think will be helpful. Let your students try things they think will be helpful. If they turn out not to work for them, then you just pivot and you move on. Number two, we need flexibility in modalities. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. Everyone, neurotypical, neurodivergent, doesn't matter. We all have strengths and weaknesses. This is especially true for kids and teens who struggle in school. Some struggle with reading, some struggle with writing, some struggle with math. There are tools and accommodations that can help with all of those things, but also being flexible with the expected outcome can make all the difference to kids with learning challenges. For example, kids with dysgraphia have a hard time with writing, handwriting, and also written expression, which can also be true for those with executive functioning challenges. If they need to learn about cell biology and they need to demonstrate what they've learned about cell biology, does it have to be by writing a five-page paper? No, it doesn't. Students can also demonstrate what they've learned about cell biology through a video, an oral presentation, a poster, a model, or a diorama, even an animation that they built. A kid with writing struggles is likely to do a lot better creating a video or a PowerPoint presentation than writing a scientific paper. And they've met the goal of learning about cell biology and demonstrating what they've learned. We need to be flexible in how we allow kids to demonstrate what they've learned and how they learn it in the first place. Our third area of flexibility that I wanna highlight is in planning and organization. 
We often assume that everyone plans and organizes the exact same way. That one system should work for all the students in a classroom. But this just isn't the case. It's just not true. Students with executive functioning delays or deficits can't instinctually plan and organize. It isn't a need. And the ways you do it may not make sense to someone else. It may not make sense to that student, that child, that teen. So it's really important to allow students to organize themselves and their schoolwork in alternative ways. Frankie Baghdad talks a lot about this in her session on tools and strategies to help get schoolwork done. So the teacher may have asked you, the parent, for a five-section spiral notebook and three colored folders for their class. Your kid may be lucky to get everything in one folder or notebook. That was my kid. When they're rushing to get packed up at the end of class, it's okay for different students to organize their materials in different ways. Work with each individual to devise an organizational plan that works for them. Try things. If they don't work, pivot. Try something else. It's okay to go through that process. It is the process you should be going through. So that's just touching on the concept of flexibility in education with kids who struggle in school. Join us for the 2023 School Struggle Summit, and you'll learn a lot more about implementing flexibility in education so that all students have the opportunity for success. Go to thebehaviorrevolution.com slash school to learn more and grab your free spot. That's thebehaviorrevolution.com slash school. I really hope to see you there.